Fatty liver is a condition where there's fat within the liver. And this is an extremely common condition and its incidence is increasing. It parallels the incidence of obesity. And we know that worldwide, everybody is getting fatter and fatter. And it's going to be a big problem in the future. Now what happens during fatty liver is that the fat in our body preferentially goes to our tummy. So you'll find that people with fatty liver problem tend to have a big tummy. They need not be big and fat. They don't need not have a chubby face or like big arms and big legs. It can be a relatively lean person but with a small tummy and that could, person could very well have fatty liver. Now another question that I always ask is the, is the, is the fat wrapping the liver. Okay. So fat does not wrap the liver. The entire liver has got fat within and it's big, it's probably a bit yellower. And if you take a biopsy, you can actually see the fat droplets within the liver. So why is fatty liver such a big problem? It's a big problem because fatty liver can cause liver disease. But the misconception is that when people have fatty liver, they always think that, oh, I'm going to have a liver problem. That's not true. Fatty liver is more strongly associated with cardiovascular problems, which means that the number one cause of death in someone with fatty liver is actually heart attack. And so one should always watch their diabetes, their cholesterol, and their blood pressures because these are all strongly associated with a fatty liver. It comes as a, what we call a metabolic syndrome where there's derangements and the underlying physiology is problem with insulin resistance. And this comes because there's too much sugar, there's obesity, and then the pancreas starts feeling because they can't produce enough insulin and patients become diabetes, the body becomes resistant to the amount of insulin that's being produced. And then fatty liver happens as well during this process. Now fatty liver itself can cause liver problems, although like I said, heart problems tend to be more common. In fact, cancers are also uh, increased. Fatty liver causes inflammation of the liver and over many years, when I say over many years, I'm not talking about just one year or two years. One can have fatty liver for 20 years before coming down with liver failure. But if fatty liver starts early in adolescence or early in adulthood, then when one reaches middle age, one could then come down with a liver problem still at a fairly young, at a fairly young age, at around 40s or 50s. Now when the liver get, undergoes inflammation, it undergoes it moves from a normal liver to a fatty liver and from fatty liver it then transits to liver fibrosis. Once liver fibrosis begins, that's when the problem starts. From fibrosis, we then start developing liver cirrhosis. And once you have hardening and liver cirrhosis, you start seeing the complications of end-stage liver disease, which means you start getting leg swelling, you will have easy bruising, you start developing jaundice. And that's when the quality of life starts going down because you start developing lethargy, your mental, your mind is not so clear because your liver can't clear the toxins in your body. And then we know that in the future, as we cure people from hepatitis C and we have good medicines for hepatitis B, fatty liver is an up and coming problem and it's going to be eventually the number one cause of liver transplants throughout the world. It's, it may also supersede hepatitis B and C in terms of number one cause of liver cancer in the world. Now what's worrying is that fatty liver itself is a risk factor for liver cancer. And one does not need to have cirrhosis or hardening of the liver in order to develop liver cancer. One can develop liver cancer even with liver fibrosis alone. So there's still much of, um, there's still a lot of research going on in fatty liver. And, and, the, and the reason is because um, there's a lot of patients with fatty liver throughout the world. And the bigger problem is that we don't have any good treatment at this point in time. The only treatment that's successfully shown to improve fatty liver is essentially weight loss. And the recommended amount of weight that one should aim to achieve is actually 10% of the weight. So if someone is overweight and someone could be 80 kilograms, then that person should aim to achieve a weight loss of about 8 kilograms in order for the liver inflammation to be reduced and the risk to be reduced. There are medicines such as vitamin E that can be given an antioxidant for patients with fatty liver. However, studies have shown that vitamin E does not benefit all patients and only selected group of patients who do not have diabetes can benefit from vitamin E treatment. So as, as of now, the current treatment for fatty liver, the mainstay, is still very much a lifestyle and diet advice. And this actually is a very good advice because it not only treats fatty liver, it also treats the other problems. It's relevant to diabetes, relevant to high blood pressure and cholesterol as well. Question is whether one can achieve it. So in order to achieve it, one may need to seek professional advice, like a dietitian, see a doctor, you know, get 
proper uh, assessment to know what stage are they. Are they just fatty liver? Are they fatty liver with inflammation? Are they fatty liver with fibrosis? Or are they fatty liver with cirrhosis? Anyone who is fatty liver only with no inflammation and no fibrosis need not worry too much about the liver, but should focus more on just their diabetes and their cholesterol and, and, their, and their high blood pressure if they have. Okay? And losing weight is of course good. One with fatty liver and inflammation, what we call steatohepatitis or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, would then worry about progression to liver cirrhosis. And these are the people who we may consider more intensive dietary or lifestyle modifications. You may also want to consider things such as um, vitamin E treatment. And if they are obese, um, significantly obese, then we may even consider bariatric surgery if they can't meet the weight loss requirements. And for those who, are, who have already established liver cirrhosis, then again, this is a group where we need to intensively focus on them. And in addition, we also need to treat the complications of liver cirrhosis. We also need to screen them actively for liver cancer because these are the group that's highest risk, there's a highest risk of developing liver cancer. And if they do develop liver cancer, then they would need a liver transplant. So that, in a nutshell, is what fatty liver is all about. Thank you.